I started going to prison when I was 14, in and out of prison. I started from juvenile, then reformatory, medium security, maximum security. And each time I went to prison, I would move toward spiritual material religious works. When I left home, my mother gave me one thing. She gave me the word. And all through those prisons, it was the word that kept me safe. Sitting here, I feel like it's a miracle to be able to sit here and look at you and to share this moment. Such a blessed moment. Let's relish this moment. This is all we have right now. I go into prisons and I try to share this moment with men and women incarcerated. So like Harriet Tubman or Sojourner Truth, I go back to my home. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look at a prison once I got out in 1997. But you know, we have no say in this matter. And I'm so grateful to be able to share this moment with so many people who would never ever hear this, never ever be able to take in this beauty. This beauty that I have experienced tonight, I would take in the San Quentin tomorrow. I would tell them about you all. Every time I sit before a crowd, I wonder what kind of energy will come toward me. So much love is here tonight. So much love. Thank you. So much love. It was in 1994. I had finally served over 21 years in prison. Off and on. And I went to a meeting, small group meeting. And a spiritual teacher came in. And being the Christian that I was, I asked her a Christian qu question, but she gave me a spiritual answer. And that spiritual answer went into my head, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit. And I changed right on the spot. I was born again. It feels so good to be born again. Once I had the spiritual awakening, All my old hustling buddies would come to me and say, Kenny, let's walk the yard. Let's talk about them hoes, man. Let's talk about what we're going to do when we hit the bricks. I said, stunt, man, all I want to do is look at the mountains, man, and just watch the snow caps. He says, Kenny, whatever that is you got, I don't want none. <laughs> I understood, you know, he had an investment. He was a hustler. He had $100,000 and a woman waiting on him so he, and, and some friends waiting on him, so he had a game. He had a, he, he had a business plan. I understood that. I hated squares. Now I'm a square. <laughs> I'm so 
much of a square, I don't even know how to take care of myself. <laughs> That one before, Square Power. <laughs> I might call it a new program, Square Power and San Quentin. <laughs> My number one supporter, she couldn't be here tonight because she's got a bad back. Her name is Rupam, so I dedicate this to Rupam, but she's here. If it wasn't for Rupam, I don't think I'd be able to have a healthy relationship with a woman because when I stepped into Rupam's life, I was all fucked up, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. After having the spiritual awakening and everything, I still had issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I still got issues, too. that she just, she would just hold the space for me until I was able to uh, finally start owning my own stuff. Year in and year out, she says, this is on me, this is on me, this is on me. And finally one day I said, no, oh, this one's on me. So now I'm able to be honest, I'm able to uh, not hit, hit a woman, I'm not able to not spit in her face and throw water on her. We have our arguments. But I know there's a, there's a line I cannot cross as a man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.